Hello and welcome back everybody. So in the last video we um, started doing some animation. So now the, the character who I named Axon climbs up out of the ground and then jumps into a running animation. Uh, he's not moving yet, but that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, well, uh, I named my character Axon. You can name yours anything you want. And that's one of the really fantastic things about game development. There's unlimited freedom and creativity. Um, you can really do whatever you want. So I, I hope you guys are excited about that. Um, so go ahead and click on Axon, double click his movement script, and pull that open. Um, I think I can probably make this text a little bit larger for you guys. Let's try that. Options, general. Um, I'm not sure how to make the text larger, so I'm going to pause the video really quick. All right, that, that was actually surprisingly straightforward. Um, if you want to make the text larger on yours, you can hit the control key and then zoom in with the mouse wheel. Uh, I think that'll be good. Alright, so this is Axon's movement script, and we have a reference to the player. We have a reference to Axon himself. When the game starts, we, we look for the player, save the reference to them, look for the transform component on Axon, save the reference to that. And then in our update script, every single frame, we just tell Axon to rotate toward the player. Now, we I'm just going to make Axon move toward the player. Um, we probably want some sort of stopping distance. So we'll create a float variable for that and we'll make it public. Public float stopping distance. Um, so let's just assign a value of 1 there. So public means this this variable is exposed in the Unity inspector. And it also means that any other component can access this variable. So now we have our stopping distance on Axon. And let's just very quickly calculate how close we are to the player. So um let's just do a float variable for that float distance to player equals vector 3 dot distance and th this is a this is a built-in method so vector 3 that's a class that unity provides us and it, it has a distance method built in um, when you highlight that here you can see it returns the distance between a and b and so it's expecting us to pass in two positions a and b so position 1 is axon's position, axon transform dot position, and position B is the player's position. We'll call that player transform dot position. Alright, and now let's just print that to the console. Uh, distance to player. Now jump back to this, hit play. And now you can see in the very bottom left, in our console, um, every single frame it is printing the distance that we are to Axon. So now we're really close. And now we're kind of further away. Um, I'm probably going to want him to stop running when he's about that close to me. So that's 2.94. So let's go ahead and make the stopping distance um, oh yeah, and if you're trying to click on Axon and you can't, you're probably in the game view. So just click on scene view and then you can select him. And make sure you have the root object selected. And let's just make that 3, based on our experimentation. So now, going back to this, um, let's go ahead and create an if statement. If distance to player is less is less than... I guess we should do greater than. If the distance to the player is greater than stopping distance, print um, out of moving. Else. Print stopped. Alright, so 
we have distance to player being calculated every single frame, and we also have a value of 3 for the stopping distance. So if the distance to the player is greater than 3, we're going to fire this piece of code. Otherwise, we're going to fire this piece of code. So basically, if, if we're more than 3 units away, we're just going to say we're moving. So let's play that. Alright, so he's moving now, and now once we get up close, we want him to stop. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> okay, so um, another thing to notice is when we get too close, he sort of, like, leans backward. That's because he's trying to rotate to face us, but we're sort of, like, above him. Uh, we can fix that later. But notice, when we get up close, it prints the word stopped because we want him to stop moving. So, uh, let's just make him move in this in this block right here. And th that seems like a good reason to make a new method. So, we're going to say, we're going to create a void method called move. And we're going to pass in a target. Vector3 target. And then we can create another function called stop. And we don't have to pass anything into that. And so if you've never done any programming before, um, we just created m something called methods. And these are basically reusable blocks of code. And so when we go into this block of code, we can call this function. And the um, when Axon's moving, the target we're going to pass in is the player position. So player transform dot position. And when when we want him to stop, we just call stop. So th this should actually just do the exact same thing. Moving and stopped. Moving and stopped. So. All we're doing is calling a method and then printing moving. So in our move method, we want to push the character toward this position. So we can take axon transform. And there's a few different methods we could use. Like we could make them walk forward. Because we know they're going to be facing the player, so we could just have them um, move in that direction. We could use um, we could do something called lerping or a, or a spherical lerping. Um, I think I'm actually just gonna use the built-in vector three method. So axon transform dot position. So we're just we're just gonna assign him a new position, and we're gonna use vector three dot move towards. And so this method it's gonna take his current position a target position, and then how far along that path you want them to move. So his current position is axon transform dot position. Whoops. Position. And then we're moving toward player transform dot position. And how far do we want them to move? Let's let's go ahead and create a move speed variable, public float move speed. And we can just give that a value of two for now. All right, and then we can play that. All right, so you can see he is moving toward us, but it's not the way we want it to. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one, he's jumping up in the air, which is annoying, um, and that's because The, the center of our player is here, and so he, the, the center of this guy is here, and the center of our player is about halfway up the character. We, we want our character to be centered at his feet. Um, so the easiest way to do that is to probably put this on, a, on another object. Uh, I 
bit empty. Actually, why don't we just... I mean, this this feels kind of hacky. That there's probably a better way to do it. But I'm just going to create an empty object and put it at the player's feet. Player feet. Um, and then just make this character move toward the player feet. So that way he's not sort of teleporting into the air. And when Axon tries to find the player, we're just going to have him look for a player of feet. And so that should fix the jumping into the air problem. Yeah, so at least he's on the ground now. But he's still kind of teleporting toward us. And now, the reason for that is because um, in our move function, when we tell him to move, our move speed is 2, which means he can move 2 full units per frame, which is like like a, a, a unit in Unity, I think is a meter. He's probably about 2 meters tall, so he's moving about this far per frame, which is really, really fast. Like, there, especially if you're moving at 60 frames per second. And so we want to modify his, his movement speed based on how long it takes to render each frame. Because if a, if a person is running like a really high-end PC and then there's another person playing on his same team with like a really crappy PC, um, we, we want the movement speed to be the same on both computers. And so we need to take frame rate into consideration for the update method. So to do that, we just do time.delta time. And you can see in the description the time in seconds it took to complete the last frame. So if, if a frame takes like one-tenth of a second, we're just going to multiply that by the move speed. And that, that should um, even things out a little bit. Yeah, that's much better. Seems a little bit slow. Um, that, and we can actually edit this while in play mode. So click on Axon, and let's just set this to like 5. And you can see already he's, he's speeding up quite a bit. Let's try 10 or 15. Oops. 15. And now you can see he's much faster than we are. I think the player is moving at about 8, so let's just stick with that. Yeah, so I walk at about 5 and I sprint at about 8. It's terrifying. Alright, so we have movement, animation, and spawning taken care of. Uh, and then you'll notice if I leave play mode, Axon got set back to a move speed of 2. That's because play mode changes are not saved. So set that back to 8. That seems too fast, actually. And then a quick way to fix that, if you set it to 5, if you don't want to lose that value when you leave play mode, you can go up here and copy the game object, and then leave play mode, and you can see it reset. But but you at least have a copy of the play mode version, so now you can paste that. And this one is at 5 versus 8. So that saved our play mode changes. Uh, it's kind of a cool little trick. So notice we don't want him to move when he's spawning. So just a really easy way to fix that is using a timer. So we can say private float timer1. And when the, when the object spawns, we can set timer1 to timer... Sorry, time dot time. And so th this is the time at the beginning of this frame in game seconds. So as, as soon as this um, monster spawns, we record the time. And then in our move script, let's say if time dot time is less than time of one plus two seconds just to return 
And now what's that, what that's going to do is, if we just spawned and less than two seconds have passed, we're just going to skip out of this function. We're not going to move the character, we're just going to we're just going to break, and we're not even going to point the word moving. Um, but then, obviously, after two seconds have passed, this statement is no longer true, so we can just skip that, and we'll go to here, and then move the character. So he climbs out of the ground, and then starts moving. And two seconds wasn't quite, wasn't quite right. Um, let's go ahead and see how long that animation takes, actually. Axon, creature, and notice when I click on creature 1, um, it's not doing anything. If I click on project panel and then click on creature 1, now it actually highlights the animated controller. Um, so now we want to figure out how long that spawning animation takes. So I'm going to find that here. Uh, man, it's for some reason it's opening up Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Oh my gosh, Visual Studio is so frustrating. It's so slow and, and bulky. Okay, so spawning. Where was that? Spawn. It's from 468 to 520. And that must be in frames at 30 frames per second. So let's just do a quick calculation. Um, we have 520 frames minus the start frame, which is 468. So during that animation, 52 frames go past at 30 frames per second, which is 1.73 seconds. Easy enough, 1.73. And if I did the math correctly, he should crawl up out of the ground and then immediately start running toward us. Kind of seemed off. Um, there, There is a little bit of, like, fading between animations. Um, like, as one ends, the next one sort of fades into it. So, how long does that take? Is that in frames? 115 to 120. That axis isn't labeled. Let's just make this um, transition smaller, like that. So if we scrub over to that point, it's not letting me. Okay, so play, and let's just see how that transition looks. Ah, uh, that was bad. So we definitely need the the fade. Um, and I'm just gonna call that 0.5 seconds. So going back to this, um, since there is like a natural fade of about 0.5 seconds. We'll just take off 0.5 from here. Maybe take off 0.4. Let's let's see how that looks. Yeah, that was okay. So the game starts, he crawls up out of the ground, and then after 1.3 seconds have passed, he starts moving toward us. Okay, I'm cutting the video off here. Thanks for watching, guys.